Hi everyone. So I'm going to introduce about Test Cafe. So this is based on my two days journey about exploring using it. So I just tried it for two days. So this is the disclaimer. Yes. So I'm um, an engineer from GovTech. I'm the tech lead for the MCCY Grants Portal. And I'm a strong believer in delivering high quality software because I come from a uh, aerospace industry and I develop software for drones. That's why I strongly believe that we should write quality software. So why is quality important? If you don't, we will end up something like this. Doesn't make sense. The cyclist path is blocked, running into the middle of the road via divider. And also, if quality is not if people are not particular about quality, you may end up in this situation whereby your features doesn't really work well. So the next one also doesn't make sense. Okay, so these are some of the tools that I have tried previously. Like I've been using RSpecs, and the second one is Robot Framework. Then Touch of it on Selenium, Cucumber, Epitools, and Puppeteer, and uh, Gatlin, Mocha, SourceLab. Runner and code set JS. So I was talking about this. That my this is the Chrome extension that I've created. It's called Robot Coder. So it is a little little effort to try out whether can I help people to do better better test scripting and help the beginners to learn about how to create test script easily. Okay. So I'm really happy that the robot order is listed on the Robot Framework official website. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so then, so the motivation for me is like I want to find a Kabibara replacement. Kabibara is actually a tool we use in Rails previously. Our we are our code is developed on Ruby on Rails, and we are using this uh, tool called this gem called Kabibara. So Kabibara has it's a bit old and then it's based on Qt RedKit which also not in, can't really install well. Usually when people try to install it, we'll encounter problem installing. That is why we wanted to replace it. So our the key motivation is to find a node-based tool which developer can use to perform web testing. So this will be on top of our existing regression suite. Then also we, I wanted to create a happy path testing for a faster and also help me to demo the products to my user. Then we did some Google search and then we met with this tool called Test Cafe. It's a node based tool to automate end to end web testing. So, some of the features it support multiple OS. When it's node, it's easy to support some window on Mac, on Linux. Then it also support multiple browsers as long as the browser supports HTML5. And it has a lot of features including like concurrent run and then multiple it can run on multiple machines and also on mobile and key thing is support headless page object and then it can integrate with our CI and because it's node it's very easy to set up so I decided that these are the three objectives I should do to, to meet to, see, to evaluate whether this test cafe is it suitable for me then I think first of all I went into a website and followed the getting start guide to install the test cafe on my machine. Then following through the getting start guide, uh, use the sample test and then just run through the test, make sure that installation is working well. Okay, so the next one, right? Next one is where I create my simple test. So these thoughts come up. How do I? How does Test Cafe select the element? Does Test Cafe support as path? Because it's something that I'm very, I'm more used to compared to the other selector. And the other one is how does Test Cafe interact with the element? So I did a bit of research. Then I realized that Test Cafe supports CSS selector and supports DOM. As path is not directly supported, so it's supported via the DOM API calls. Then the action is quite featureful, I would say. You can support click, you can double click, you can hover. And the more the feature I really like is that it can support upload, file upload feature. 
So this is my basic test. I create a simple login test on my web app itself. Yeah, you can see that actually this is it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so I will demo. So this is the application that I'm going to do a test on. So for the first card, what I'm going to do is to do a simple login test. Then after login, I do a lockout. I'm running Chrome. The test pass. So, wait, sorry, just to show, right? For the first test, this is my login test. So, first of all, you define a feature, then you define the page whereby the page will get the test will get loaded in, and then you define the test case. And all these are running on async. So, this one, I will click on the login button, then I select. Over here, I will show when I click on the login. Then, this is something that I haven't figured out yet. So, by right, the API actually helps us to delete away the text. You can choose whether to overwrite it or append the text. But in this case, I couldn't delete away the text using the same API call. That is why I have to do a select, then I do a delete, and then after that, I add enter in a random NRIC. and do a login then hover over this one do a lockout this is what my basic test will consist of so in the process of debugging i also realized that there's a quite interesting feature called debug so debug help us to pause between in the test execution like let's say for now if i run it again So now it, you can see that it paused at this website. So this debug feature is very useful for me to actually do a troubleshooting. If, if let's say my test fail, right, I'm able to pause at a certain stage in time. And I go and investigate whether it, the test fail, is it because that it couldn't find the element, the element is missing, or exactly why is it so. And also sometimes it's like help me to do a bit of intervention. So let's say I decided that Maybe it fails for now, so let me pause it and then work on other features. I can do a manual intervention to unlock, interact with the page. So I can view, I can do any actions on it. Ah, I sorry, I need to unlock it again. Yep. So clicking go to go to dashboard again, and then I can resume the test. So this really helped me to troubleshoot and identify the issue with, let's say, with my test screen. So the next steps I have is to create the happy path testing. And yeah, I encountered the problem whereby the drop down doesn't work. And the thing is that our drop down, we also encountered the problem, it's not that testable and because we are using external library. So it's a bit hard for us to identify exactly which class, which element to click on, to interact with. So this is the drop down. We are using an element to help us, the external library component to help us 
with selection of the options but somehow I tried it couldn't really identify and interact with it so I decided to try the IDE Test Cafe Studio and the IDE actually has like uh, it's a free IDE currently for test recording and it can help me to kickstart my test without coding yeah I tried the story and I tried it for five minutes then I decided that um, I prefer to script directly feature wise you can you can do a record and then you can edit the element and then play it on the IDE it's quite featureful also so I tried for five minutes and then I decided to give out on test cafe studio and I decided to go by a different approach whether is it because that my selector is wrong that's why I tried with a lot of select with a different selectors and then tried do a lot of trial and error until I managed to target the right element okay so I will show you my path testing so what this test does is to submit an application form fill in all the fields and then submit it going into the acknowledgement page so if you in does a basic login as well then go into and select the grant scheme fill in each of the element Yep, the test passed. So after doing the happy path, I will show you my source code. Yep. So I decided to go for a very very step by step approach, listing out all the elements then this is the user interaction then filling of the form filling of the sessions then without any assertion at this point in time and then submit the form and then the assertion is mainly at the bottom whereby i want to test whether grant application submission is it successful or not so after doing this My next step, as a developer, I don't like this. There's a lot of codes that's repetitive. I didn't wanted to dry my own code. So I also explored like the page object model, about 50%. Uh, still in the progress, but I think that essentially the gist of it is achieved. That's why I decided to try other features. So test 3 is my code. I decided to classify it by page so we have the eligibility page the grant creation page then all the other page submitted then each of the session will have this code so in the examples that test get page show all these IDs can be actually initiated as another variable and over here we can just call the function for that variable instead so that so that we actually don't have to redefine like all this code what if it is changed then we can use it at the central place right to update all this id and update all this value okay then just now what i mentioned right i couldn't get one of the code to work the interaction with the text um by rights this select text right it accepts an option for me to clear away, replace away the text as a type but this is not working so as a temporary measure I decided that I will just do more steps like I will select the text first, delete it and after that input the text and to make my test a bit more simple I will just make it as a function 
so that my function actually calls this clear and type text instead. And then my select, right? My select actually is I have to do a two-step approach to do my selection. And I also decide to make this as a function. So this kind of like helped me to simplify the amount of changes I have to make. If let's say I have a new grant itself, new application, I can reuse all this kind of, all this code easily. So this kind of like so with this right, I feel like I have achieved the essence of page object model. But if you're any or the provision tester, if you think otherwise, please let me know and share with me. Yeah. Then I also explored like the reporter. Is it possible that it can it use a Team CD reporter? Currently, our CI pipeline we are using Team CD. So, is there any easy integration with Team CD or with any other units? Then yes, it's pretty easy. People have already write, written the written the package for that. Okay, so this is my package .json file. So if I want to change the reporter, I can either add dash dash reporter as unit inside, or I can use a dash r team city. And the output will be in the wherever reporting unit that is specified. Then some of the option I will say here, headless. I really like this option. And dash s dash s means screenshot on failure. So if let's say the test fails, right, then this test cafe will help us automatically do a screenshot and save the result to this folder. This is the test to run. So after that, I decided that mm, yes, I have met all my three objectives. So what's next? Then I decided to experiment with Jenkins and then Cucumber. Whether can it support the BDD format, behavior-driven development? And unfortunately, I tried, and it seems that the experimentation wasn't as successful because the current there is no official support for the this uh, Jenkins and Cucumber. I did try to use the existing I did try to use uh, this any existing library but unfortunately they are saying that it's deprecated. And the other thing is that this will be my basic login test which I write in BD format. So I do a login navigate to the home page, click on the login URL, then when I fill in the credential and click apply, then I should be logging into the system. Then this is my definition of the steps. Now, unfortunately, I don't really have much luck on this session, and then I don't like the syntax. That's why I decided that maybe I should wait for the official support for this drinking and cucumber syntax. Can you show Team CD? Sure. Okay, I'm running this with Team City Report. Yep. So this is the information that you get from Team City itself.
And actually, I, the next thing I tried is Docker. I really like to learn Docker. That's why, although Test Cafe does officially support Docker, but I don't have much luck as well. I'm suspecting that uh, it's lacking a module there which I need, which is the Moment JS. So my suspicions haven't really go into the code is that the result actually use moments, right? Sorry, just now I delete away. It used like the folders are actually structured in year, month, date. And this one will be using my guess is it's using moment. That is why it's complaining about the missing information. Although officially support, but I don't have much luck. Then from this try two days of try, I have actually learned that from just now what you all observe as well, right? Is the startup is pretty slow, but the good news is with headless is much faster. It cuts about I was trying it. It takes about thirty seconds more for we uh, for browser versus headless. And I really like about the good documentation that Test Cafe has. It has been released for since two o I think two o one three, so it is pretty stable. Reporting is not as comprehensive as Robot Framework. So what I see just now is that usually Robot Framework what it gives us is a good, very good structured HTML report stating each of the steps that we have performed. But in this case, I don't really get that comprehensive report. It's good for a visual test, but for our case, since we are not going to replace Robot Framework, I think this is good enough. And it's also good for CI integration. And I also learned about writing testable UI because of the problem that I encountered. Yeah. So what's next? I am still very, very keen to have set out my own Docker file and then using a Docker Compose to run the test. Make sure that at least get the test execution to be fast. Then I'm also interested to explore more of the functionality, especially like assessing of the console log. So this is something that I tried Puppeteer. Is although it integrates with the Chrome Dev Two, it doesn't really give me the access to Chrome the console log at a point in time. So so why I'm particular about this is that as a developer, sometimes I will just open, uh, do a right click and then inspect the element and then check console log. Is there anything wrong with the loading of the element itself? So with this, right, it can help me to print out. I don't have to do a manual test. Then just now when I mentioned, right, I only try Test Cafe for five minutes. And I think that I should, I want to invest more time in using Test Cafe Studio, understand how it works. And next, right, to explore on the framework specific selector. We are using ReactJS and Test Cafe actually have a, another package to support ReactJS component testing. So that's end of my talk. Then, do you all have any questions? It can be used for mobile. Yeah, it can be supported by mobile. Support native, no web. Yeah. Why did you move from mobile framework? Sorry. Why did you move from mobile framework and change to Oh, actually, I was wasn't on mobile framework from the start. It's more on the web framework. So Capybara is actually a web testing. So I asked, right, where did you move from robot framework and choose test cafe? Uh, mobile? Robot. Oh, robot. Robot framework, we use it for our regression testing. So for this one, right, we want to run it faster. And also, it's more developer-centric. We are using Node.js and it's something that the developer are more used to. That is why we want to try out like the test cafe. Okay. And you're saying robot framework is not that good the speed uh, Sorry? Robot framework is not that good enough for the speed? It's not fa the execution of the test is not faster, you're saying? Uh, may not be. So it really depends. So robot framework, we are still using it. So it's more of like doing this to try out how can we explore new tools as well. Besides robot framework, any other things we can try. So robot framework, in fact, we have reached a very 
our usage, I see that we have reached a very mature state whereby we have dockerized all our tests, then running maybe 10 to 20 tests at one time using Docker. So it reached a point, so I decided, I was thinking that yes, I can do robot framework, but my learning will be greater if let's say I try a new tool. And when I try a new tool, I also learn that what kind of improvement or what kind of like gaps are there for robot framework. And that will also help me appreciate robot framework better. Yeah. Robot framework is, uh, is it Python? Right? Yep, correct, you're right, it's Python. So it's not in JavaScript? Yes, Node.js. So Node.js is, I think Python is also uh, OS agnostic, same as Node.js. So Node.js to me is easier to set up. I can just do, uh, as a developer, I already installed Node.js already, and then I can just do an NPM install. Test because, cafe. Uh, my developer, they are using React, so it's, it's actually quite advisable to use something that's close to React Native JavaScript. Yep, yep. And this one supports React. There's a React library as well. React Native is JavaScript. JavaScript like yeah. JavaScript and JavaScript. Yeah, but I can't use this because I'm using mobile right. native. Right. So I'm trying mm. to use it here. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. So okay, next. So we are also hiring, looking for great team players with all these roles and not only all these roles, and people who are passionate about tech and want to help us to build awesome service. So be part of our journey and our future. You can reach me at this email. Okay, thank you and have a great weekend.